All right, what's up everybody? It's Ethan here, and I am still in Mexico, in Baja, California, in a very different place than uh, I was yesterday. If you guys didn't see that other video, um, I was hiking right on the coast yesterday by uh, La Bufadora, the blowhole, which is a really popular tourist spot down there by Ensenada. Today, however, I am pretty far away from there, about four hours away from there to be exact. And I am in the Sierra de San Pedro Martir mountain range. Uh, and this is a national park and it is incredible. The drive here from, uh, you know, from the main highway, from highway one was unreal. You literally go from sea level to uh, 8,000 feet. <laughs> And it is a spectacular drive. It takes about two hours to get here from the uh, main highway, but uh, it's well worth the trip up here. Even if you don't hike, I mean, the drive is just incredible. There's tons of wildlife. I mean, I've seen lots of birds, uh, condors, um, I've seen coyotes, deer. It is a really cool place. And there's like pretty much nobody else up here, which normally I think is cool, but honestly, it's a little disconcerting how few people there are up here. There's quite a process for getting into the national park if you're planning on doing a hike like I'm doing. And essentially, uh, the process is that they um, have you uh, basically sign in and fill out a form with information. They even make you put like emergency contacts and they take your picture and then they ask you what time you plan on exiting the park. And I guess if you're not back by that time, they uh, come looking for you, which is cool. Honestly, it's uh, it's something that you really don't see in U.S. national parks too much. And I mean, it wouldn't really make sense to do that in Yellowstone or something because there's just so many people that go to Yellowstone but you know I guess this park doesn't get that much visitation so um, you know it's just I guess it is nice knowing I mean I did already tell other people before I drove up here about my plans and what time to expect to hear from me but it's nice to know that you know the uh, park rangers here and stuff know where I am and what I'm doing and when I should be leaving as well but uh, anyway, today I'm going to be hiking uh, Cerro Botella Azul, or Blue Bottle Peak, which is, I believe, the second tallest mountain in the park, and also the second tallest mountain on the Baja Peninsula. And it is right next to the tallest mountain on the peninsula, which is called uh, uh, Pico, or Picacho del Diablo, uh, which obviously is devil's peak um, that one is over 10,000 feet this one is like I think 9,500 something like that and um, it should be a good little hike I think it says it's back there it said it was nine kilometers to the summit which is like you know I guess four and a half five miles something like that so it should be somewhere between a nine to ten mile round trip and about 1,500 feet of elevation gain. So not too bad of a hike, but definitely a solid hike for sure. The reason I'm not doing the other peak, uh, Picacho del Diablo, is because it is a much, much more difficult hike. <laughs> like lots of like class four climbing, um, an insane amount of elevation gain because you actually have to go down like 3,000 feet and then back up uh, to get to the summit. And then also there's a lot of insane route finding apparently. So it's actually like highly recommended to not do that hike by yourself. And, uh, you know, Blue Bottle or Botella Azul just seemed so much easier. And, or I guess I would say so much more approachable. And since I'm here by myself and already doing a lot of other stuff, I decided this was the best way to go. But anyway, I've been talking for a long time, so I'll shut up and get back to you guys a little further in on the trail. Okay, so this is the actual trailhead right here, the upper trailhead. 
Um, you do need four wheel drive to get here. Uh, my car, it could have probably made most of that road, but there were like three or four spots that were just a little too gnarly for my car. So, I mean, I will say if you drive, you know, like a good four wheel drive, high clearance vehicle, you should have no problem getting to this trailhead. And as you saw, there are two other vehicles here, one with California plates and one with Baja California plates. So I did add a little bit more distance on. Now it did say that it was nine kilometers to Botella Azul from back there, from that, the turnoff off of the main park road. Um, so I don't know. I'm hoping that means that, you know, it's still just going to be a nine kilometer hike up to the summit, but we'll see. Maybe it meant nine kilometers from this upper trailhead and I added on a little bit extra. I don't know. We'll see. Either way, I'm here for it. All right, well, I was following that wash through there for a really long time, and uh, it looks like the trail is finally branching away from it. A lot of the time there is no trail and you just kinda have to hike through the wash. It's uh, pretty flat, but it's very, like a lot of deep sand, so it's a pain in the ass to hike through there, and I'm definitely glad that the trail seems to be heading away from it now. Who knows though, maybe we'll like rejoin with it later. I don't fucking know. But the trail has gained a little bit of elevation, but really not much. I mean, maybe like 300 feet. So I've still got a good ways to go. Wouldn't even really say I'm, I don't even think I'm halfway yet, but it is beautiful through here. This forest is very reminiscent of, you know, Southern California, Sequoia National Park, which makes sense because it's not too far from there. But yeah, really cool. Okay, well, I am uh, about halfway in terms of mileage. Um, in terms of elevation though, I'm not even close. I'm only at about 8350 right now and the summit is at I think like 9550. So I've still got like 1200 feet of elevation gain left, which is crazy because like I said, you know I've been hiking for <laughs> I mean I would say at least three miles now. So, this uh, trail is definitely, I mean, it's starting to pick up some elevation. So I'm kind of hoping it's just like a steady gain for the rest of the hike. But we'll see. It's definitely interesting that that, that that first like three miles was basically almost all flat. I guess it's a nice warm up. And also... When you're hiking this trail, do plan for it not being super well maintained. There's a lot of blowdowns and big rocks that you have to scramble up and over. It's just the way it is. Man, this is so beautiful. Little aspen stand in here. And I'm keeping count. Uh, so far today I've seen two coyotes. Maybe I'll see more. I know this area supposedly has a lot of coyotes and so far that's been true. I mean, I've seen, I saw two on the drive in. Haven't seen any on the hike yet. And I also saw a few uh, California condors right near the uh, entrance gate for the park. So apparently they hang out around there a lot. So 
when you're entering the park. If you get lucky, you might see some. So once again, I still haven't gained that much elevation. I'm at like 8,500 feet. So I still have like a thousand feet of elevation gain left to get up to the summit, which is crazy, honestly. <laughs> um, but I'm not sure if that's the summit up there. I don't think it is. I don't think, I mean, that could be it, but I don't know, I'm not sure. I think it's probably behind that. Um, I know that there's a saddle that you have to hike up to and that's where the trail kind of splits off for, uh, you know, for uh, Botella Azul and Picacho del Diablo. And by the way, you can see what I mean here. These ones aren't too bad, but you know, blowdowns like this, I have seen a ton of them so far on the trail. And those ones were pretty small and easy to get over, but I've seen quite a few that were, you know, quite large as well. So just know that you're probably gonna see that. But I mean, this is just so cool. I mean, these, these aspens here are incredible. There hasn't been much in the way of like, you know, views or anything like that. Pretty much nothing in the way of views yet on the hike. But I mean, it's still been like really beautiful. This is a really beautiful uh, forest. So I'm definitely enjoying it. Okay, well. This hike is definitely gonna end up being a little longer than I thought it was, or than I was told. Um, this is, I'm already about five miles into the hike, and according to the map, I mean, it looks like I still have at least a mile and a half to get up to the summit. So it's gonna be like more like 13 miles, which funnily enough, is what the all trails map said. The all trails map said that it was going to be uh, thir about 13 and a half miles. And that's looking like it's going to be accurate, which is uh, crazy. I uh, was told by, I guess, don't trust any of the other sources. All trails is somehow the only one that was right because every other one was saying, you know, like eight, nine, ten miles. Now, I mean, I guess if you start from that upper trailhead, it would probably cut off like two miles round trip. So I guess that would make it like, you know, 11 miles instead of 13 miles. But still, I'm surprised. And what's crazy is, is that I still need to go up a good amount of elevation. And at this point, I don't have much... Uh, <laughs> you know, that much distance to do it. I've only gone up, so I mean, as you can see, I'm literally going down right now. And uh, that's kind of crazy because I was only up there, I was only at 8,800 feet. Uh, after this descent, I'm probably back down to like, you know, 86 or 85. And the summit is at 95, so I still have almost a thousand feet of elevation gain. I mean, it's really weird. It's like I've been hiking for miles and just feel like I've made essentially no progress. But hey, whatever. It is what it is. I was not expecting, you know, this difficult of a hike. But here we are. And I mean, at this point, you know... I think I'm just going to go for it. All right. Well, I finally broke 9,000 feet and exactly what I thought was going to happen has happened where the trail is now this. <laughs> you can see there's a Karen up there marking the trail and it's not much of one anymore. And uh, yeah, it's quite steep and, uh, you know, as you can see, very rocky, scrambly. And uh, yeah, I'm expecting that it's probably gonna be like this the rest of the way up to the summit because I still have another about 500 feet of elevation gain to get there, which is pretty crazy. Okay guys, well, I finally 
made it up onto the saddle between Diablo and Botella Azul. And for the first time on this hike, I'm getting a pretty freaking epic view. Holy shit. Look at that. That is incredible. That is. That made the. That already made this hike worth it, even though it was much harder than I anticipated. So, I believe this is the way that you need to go to get to Diablo, which you can't see from here, but we will be able to see up on the summit of Botella Azul. And Botella Azul is up there. I don't know if that's the true summit or not, but it is up in that direction. And let me tell you something, this last part of the hike is fucking tough i mean it really is it is like extremely steep no trail you're just kind of bushwhacking climbing through like a steep boulder field um there were some cairns but a lot of them were misleading and weren't taking me in the right direction so you know i kind of just i kind of just tried to i basically had the all trails map out you know like 90 percent of the time and just sticking to pretty much the exact route that whoever made that map stuck to and that eventually got me up here so thank god for that but anyway i'm gonna keep hiking i'm at about 9300 feet right now so i'm 200 feet off of the summit i'm very close and uh yeah i can't wait to get up there christ i thought this i thought that boulder field down there was hard to figure out this is way worse man this last like little bit up from the saddle is really bad i mean like there is there is no trail like whatsoever like i swear like i read that a decent amount of people hike this but that can't be true because there's like no evidence that people have been on the side of this mountain for a long time <laughs> a long long time i mean i feel like i'm the first person who's ever freaking been up here and i i mean look like there's a there's a karen right there but it's like you know i i don't even, i can't even trust those rock karens because they don't always you know like lead you to a good place like half the time i'll follow one and i'll end up you know getting into an area with such dense dense brush that i can't get through it This is freaking crazy. So I don't know. I mean, if you're planning on coming up here, this is not an easy hike at all. Good views, but not easy. Now let's see, hopefully I can get up there. All right guys, well after a much more difficult hike than expected, I made it up to the summit of Cerro Botella Azul, which uh, I believe, I'm gonna have to get the exact elevation, but it's uh, about 9,600 feet. And boy, was that insane. So this is the second tallest peak in the San Pedro Martir Mountains here in Baja, California. The highest peak is actually right over there. Uh, I don't I think it's that one. Uh, Pico del Diablo or Picacho del Diablo, however you say it. Um, that is the tallest mountain at over 10,000. I think it's like 10,200 feet or something like that. And wow, this is incredible out here. So there's an observatory out there. You can kind of see it on the peaks, those little structures up on those peaks over there. Popular spot when it's open, but it is not open today. And then if you're looking down there, that is looking towards, let me get a little closer here or a little better viewpoint. So that is looking towards the east and um, you can see back down to where it goes back into the desert. I mean, that is easily 6,000 feet below <laughs> where I'm standing right now. Um, if you look way out in the distance, well, I'd say maybe that's about 4,000, 4,000 or 5,000. 
and then like you go down there there's another like shorter set of mountains and then it drops down even more down to basically sea level and it's not quite clear enough today but the sea of cortez or gulf of california is way out over there and then of course this is looking uh this is looking over the mountains this is looking to the north here just incredible that's looking to the south and then way out in that direction over there which once again can't see it from here because it's just uh, not a clear enough day today but that is where the pacific ocean is and that is also the direction that i came from and just driving up to this park i mean it's crazy because this morning i woke up at sea level i drove up eight thousand feet and then just hiked up another you know 1600 feet up here to the summit and the crazy thing too is that uh you know <laughs> That 1600 feet, it doesn't sound like it's that bad, but I'm telling you, this hike is not easy. This is easily one of the toughest hikes I've done in quite a long time. I would say the only hike that I've done in like the last year that I could say would be equally as difficult as this would be, uh, well, I mean, I did Sierra Blanca last summer. I would say that that was a little more difficult. And then, um, also uh organ needle which i did back in november but i will say honestly i thought of organ needle when i was on this trail or trail because the last portion of it from when you go up the boulder field to the saddle and then climb up from the saddle up here to the peak it was just like climbing up organ needle i mean it was just bushwhacking maybe like a faint social trail if you were lucky karens were not to be trusted i had to be like looking at the all trails map like every five seconds i mean there were some spots where i was like where the fuck is the trail like i just could not for the life of me figure out a good way to get up especially coming up the side of the peak from the saddle that was the worst but damn it i made it up here so and also i would like to note that um this hike was significantly longer than I thought it would be. This hike is going to end up being damn near 14 miles by the time I get back to the car. And that is literally almost twice as long as some of the, like some of the trip reports I was reading said as low as eight miles. And some of them were saying as long as 10. And then of course, all trails said 13 and a half, which I guess turned out to be pretty fucking accurate. Um, but you know, it's literally almost double some of those lower mileage uh, trip reports. So when you're watching, when you're reading trip reports, like I, I read probably like three or four, pretty much all the ones I could find on like Summit Post and some other sites. And I mean, there were people on there say, oh, this is a super easy, you know, uh, you know, brings you up to the second tallest peak in the park, way easier than uh, Diablo, uh, you know, definitely super approachable for a day hike. I don't know about all that. I mean, like it is day hikeable, yes, but you have to be you know, pretty in pretty good shape. And honestly, I am not in as good a shape as I was, you know, a couple of years ago when I was climbing all those 14ers in Colorado. So this definitely is going to, I mean, the, it's going to be a rough day for me going back down. I could tell you that. Um, but either way, it's beautiful and I'm really happy to be up here and I can't wait to enjoy some relaxation here on the summit. Finally. All right. Well, real quick, I'm checking out this little box of goodies up here on the summit which is pretty cool. I don't know if there's a, let me see if there's a summit register. Yeah, there is, this is a summit register here. That is cool. Let's see. Uh, the last person to register in this, no way. Is there not, nope. That is crazy. The last person to write their name in this summit register was from January or December, December 5th, well, December 5th, 2023. Oh, sorry. I'm tripping. <laughs> it's, it's Mexico. They write the, they write the dates the other way. <laughs> okay. So, um, May 12th, 2023. Okay. Yeah. I was like, wait a second. There is no December 2023 yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm an idiot. All right. So May 5th, or sorry, May 12th was the last time somebody climbed this peak and today is May 19th. Or I mean, maybe somebody climbed it, but they didn't register in the summit. That is crazy. I mean, that's how, uh, that's how 
secluded this area is and that's how few people hike this trail and i just checked there's no cell service up here despite the fact that i'm essentially i mean other than you know the other peak over there diablo i'm essentially on the highest point in the entire baja peninsula <laughs> there is no cell service up here so Yep, just keep that in mind, but just wanted to show you this and point out the fact that, yeah, I haven't seen any other people the whole day. I saw those two cars. I, I guess they went all the way to Diablo. More power to them. Well, <clears throat> as I'm hiking out, I should have probably about three and a half, four miles left to get to the trailhead, so still a good ways, but I am back on the, you know, easier part of the trail. But I just still am like so blown away at the fact that i have not seen a single other person today <laughs> i mean ever since leaving that uh you know the entrance station where you know they got all my information and you know i paid the the fee to get in and everything i mean i have not seen any other people there were those two uh cars at the upper trailhead and I mean, I guess they were both doing uh, Diablo Peak and, uh, you know, probably, I guess, started before me and, you know, will finish after me. I think I heard that it's pretty much a must to do Diablo as an overnight and not as a day hike, which having done Botella Azul and knowing how much harder and longer they say Diablo is, as you know, compared to it. I would uh, concur with that, but yeah, I mean, this is just crazy to me how it's just, just wilderness. And when I got up on that peak too, another thing you could really see up there is how isolated and remote this mountain range is because there's just nothing on like either side of the mountain range. Like I looked out and on one side, like looking to the east, I could see a road that had to have been at least like, I don't know, probably like 70, 80 miles away as the crow flies. And it looked like a dirt road too. And then to the west, I mean, there's the road going into the park and that's really all I could see on the horizon. So just insane. Well, I am a, uh quite late checking back in with the national park i was supposed to be back by three and it is 406 i also told my uh, family i would call them at five and that is definitely not going to happen considering that i don't get cell service back until i drive until pretty much when i get back to the main highway all the way back down by the coast <laughs> so yeah that's not great. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm at like 13 and a half miles right now. And I really did not think based on the multiple trip reports that I read that this hike was going to be that long. I mean, even by all trails, um, account, this hike was, you know, as much mileage as I've done right now. And I'm still hiking. Haven't even gotten back to the, uh, upper trailhead the four-wheel drive trailhead yet and from there i think it's like another mile to get to my car i am getting close to the four-wheel drive trailhead though I was like, i'm looking at the map and i am getting close so like i'll be fine unless something terrible happens between you know now and <laughs> and then i should be fine i feel decently well right now but uh yeah i am running a little bit low on water and there might be some people that are starting to get concerned about my safety right now so and of course i have no way of communicating with them so that is unfortunate but the only thing i can do is keep hiking out holy crap so i made it back <clears throat> to the four-wheel drive trailhead which that is great. Um, yeah, same two vehicles that were here when I uh, hiked up here this morning are still here now. 
so they must be further back than me doing like a backpacking trip or something like that but anyway yeah it feels good to be back on the road from here i think it's like a mile maybe a little over a mile um to get back to where i parked my car it's like almost two miles to get back to the main road but i did drive up this road i think almost a mile before i uh, pulled over and parked so we'll see but either way feels good to be back on this road because it's it'll, it'll be you know real smooth sailing from here on out well that is a good feeling right there i can see my car that is incredible so the uh round trip mileage did end up being almost exactly 15 miles which is much longer than what i uh, was expecting but i have to say i do not regret doing this hike at all i mean actually i feel surprisingly good um but that was just so incredible oh my god i mean the views up at the summit were amazing the whole hike through this forest, I mean, like I said, very reminiscent of like Sequoia um, National Park or, you know, some of those other spots in the in the mountains in Southern California, except no people, no people. <laughs> I did not see a single person. I mean, there were those two cars at the upper trailhead. I don't know where those people were, but I did not see them. They did not register in that summit log. So... This was a completely empty hike and it was so beautiful. I mean, those views at the top were incredible. Um, yeah, and just how isolated this place is. I mean, I have been to very few places in my life that are as like isolated from civilization as this national park. So, I mean, you've got to check this out. If you're doing a road trip through Baja, I mean, it's like a two and a half hour detour from the main highway, but it's so worth it. I mean, there's other hikes you can do in the park that are not as difficult, um, that take you up to like viewpoints and whatever. There's the observatory. If that's open, check that out. Um, and I mean, if you want to do a tough hike, Botella Azul is a good choice. I mean, Diablo is an even better choice if you're, you know, if you really are a glutton for punishment, I guess. But, uh, in terms of day hiking, this is probably about the most difficult, you know, what most people would consider to be day hikeable hike you could do in the park. Um, so all said and done, the statistics were 15 miles round trip, about 2,200 feet of total elevation gain, because uh, there was a lot of return elevation gain, lots of ups and downs, uh, and it took me a little over seven hours to do this hike. So really cool. I'm super late checking back in with them, so I have to go do that. But if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys soon for another awesome adventure. And like I said, do this hike. It was awesome. Have a good one, guys.